everyone. Welcome to the Infohio presentation, Scan Your Accountability Worries Goodbye. Before we get started, we'd like to take just a moment to introduce ourselves to you. Hi, my name is Camille Shedd, and I am a technical support specialist. Hi, I'm Jim Martin, and I'm a professional technical support specialist. I'm Tracy Varner, and I'm a professional technical support specialist. We're in the midst of an unusual school year, but InfoHio is ready to help. Whether it's face-to-face, -face, remote, or blended, InfoHio is focused on doing what we do best, transforming instruction and impacting learning. There are new challenges to face inside the classroom and out, and InfoHio promises to listen and learn, providing the best support to help you use and integrate the quality digital content and web tools we provide at no cost to Ohio students teachers, and parents. As you plan your instruction, remember that InfoHio believes all students deserve equal access to high quality digital resources for a successful education and future. InfoHio wants to help you transform student learning by providing equitable access to these resources in addition to cost-effective instructional and technical support for each student, educator, and parent in Ohio. The days of managing your inventory using a three ring binder, a list of assets, and a pen have long passed. If your list is static and a year or more old, it's worth less than the paper it's printed on. Your district is accountable for every textbook, tablet, Chromebook, laptop, Bunsen burner, and music stand in your school. Would you like to be able to easily track who has your equipment or who had it last? Would you like to modernize your inventory process without investing in new tracking software? And would you be surprised to learn this is possible using a tool you already have? The InfoHio Library Services Platform, or InfoHio LSP, tracks library books, of course, but it can also track anything else with the barcode. Schools around Ohio are using their LSP to reduce the cost of lost equipment, increase the number of educational resources students can use, and collect data on how resource access improves student achievement. Student information is imported into the Info Ohio LSP from Progress Book, and employee information is imported from USAS, so there's no extra work to maintain accounts. Money is tight. That's why it's important to easily share your assets across schools to reduce the money your district spends, especially expensive equipment and textbooks. With the InfoHio LSP, you change an asset's home building by using a global modification process. Just select the new building and start scanning. Whether you're moving one asset or 100, the process is quick and easy. And because the LSP has access to all accounts in the district, you can assign items from any building to staff or students in any building. Individual academic departments can use the InfoHio LSP to track their books or equipment. For example, teachers in the math department can check out classroom textbooks to students, so at the end of the school year, it's clear who needs to turn items in. And this idea works equally well for tubas, CPR dummies, document readers, anything that can carry a barcode. It's easy to track demand, both high and low, of anything maintained in the InfoHio LSP. Just run usage reports to see how to distribute school funds where they will do the most good. Along with price and vendor, you can track the age of your equipment. At the end of each year, run a report to see what items are coming due for maintenance or replacement based on purchase year. This helps you spread out the cost of replacing equipment and can even eliminate surprises caused by deferred maintenance. With the InfoHio LSP, you can automate manual tasks. All staff and student accounts are created within 24 hours of going live in your district's progress book or USAS software. The accounts are updated daily and when a student or employee leaves the district, their account is removed if all assets have been returned. It's easy to set up automated asset reports 
that can identify where all assets are currently located, who has the asset, and when the asset should be returned. You can even email automated reports to students, parents, or employees, reminding them to return their textbooks or devices. And since parents can access the student's library account online, they can easily identify which textbooks or devices are checked out under the child's name. All of this sounds like it would be a lot of work to get started, but you might be surprised to learn it's not as difficult as it may seem. Jim, why don't you take over from here? Thanks, Tracy. You will work with your support provider to develop a plan for the devices and the user policies. The system requires a due date when materials are assigned or checked out to the user. This date could be the end of the quarter, the semester, or the school year. It could even be several years away. One recommendation is to have the due date at the end of the school year. Then you set up a renewal policy where the students present their device to show that they still have it, and the due date can then be updated to the end of the next school year. The system also has the ability to assess fines or fees for damages. These could be used when a student is using a loaner device and needs to be charged a late fee. Devices and materials can be assigned or, or checked out to the students, but they can also be checked out to staff or even carts or rooms. The InfoHio LSP supports the ability to easily import the students and teacher information from your current student information system. For staff, there's an established procedure to create the accounts using the data from the district payroll system. Each item in the system needs to be linked to a record. You can submit to your service provider a spreadsheet of your existing inventory and they can import the records into the system. Records for the devices and materials can be set up in different methods. You could have one generic record with many copies or you can have a unique record for each item. Each method has its own merits. Mix and match to find the best combination to support your district. Submit a spreadsheet with information that you would like to track and your ITC provider can create and load the records for you. Here, we have a spreadsheet that includes a district service tag that is to be used as the scannable barcode, the district fiscal asset tag, and the serial number of the device. With this kind of data, I would create one unique record per device so that this information can be tracked. Here is an example of a spreadsheet of textbooks at a high school. Since each textbook is identical, as the support provider, all I need to know is the title, class, and if this book is for the quarter or semester or the school year, and how many copies need to be loaded. We have to remember that this is a system that was designed to check out library materials. Libraries have their own unique database structure. Here are common data elements related to computers that InfoHio has identified and matched to an existing library record format. You can submit as many or as few of these elements in your spreadsheet. There are only two required elements, a title and a location. Here is a visual representation of how one record with a single title of Chromebook has multiple copies attached and the serial number is located in a note field a field that can be printed on some reports. And here is a visual representation of how one record with a single title of Chromebook model XC303312 has multiple copies attached. The district asset tag number is being used as the call number, a field that prints on reports, and the serial number is located in a note field, another field that can be printed on reports. And here is a visual representation of one record for a specific device with the title combination of Chromebook plus the serial number. The district asset tag number is being used as the call number, again, a field that shows in the reports. Camille? Thanks, Jim. Once new items are entered into the system, there are multiple ways of circulating these materials and devices out to your students and staff as well as back into your inventory when the materials and devices are returned. There are three versions of library software, which are Workflows, Blue Cloud, and Mobile Staff. All of these platforms share the same database. So all changes that occur in one platform are reflected amongst the other platforms. First, let's discuss the first version of library software, Workflows. 
In workflows, the common task wizard provides all the common day-to-day -day tasks, such as the checkout items wizard, which is displayed on this screenshot. The checkout items wizard works by scanning or entering the user ID and scanning or entering the item ID. If the user ID and the item ID are manually entered, then the checkout item to user button must be selected, which is noted in the step three on the screenshot. Scanning materials or devices back into inventory once the items have been returned is just as easy as the steps for the checkout process. Simply scan the item barcode and the item is checked in. BlueCloud is the second version of library software that is web-based, meaning no software installation, and is proven to work for Windows, Mac, and Chromebooks. From the circulation page in BlueCloud, the checkout process begins by searching for the student or staff member. The patron search in BlueCloud searches by the student or staff member's library barcode and also allows for additional search indexes such as name, student, ID, and homeroom. Checking out materials and devices in BlueCloud is similar to workflows. Once a student or staff member's account is pulled up, devices or materials can be checked out to that individual by scanning the item barcode. Items are listed on the screen as they are checked out. Checking in materials and devices in BlueCloud consists of clicking the check in button on the home page of circulation and scanning the item ID to check items in. With Blue Cloud, you are able to navigate from one building to another by selecting the building of choice while using only one set of login credentials. Blue Cloud also offers the ability to add up to 100 materials or devices at a time. The process begins by clicking New Record. When creating a new record, a template should be selected and all required fields need to be filled in. Required fields are indicated by a red asterisk. The record is saved by selecting the Create button. After clicking Create, Manage Holdings is selected. Manage Holdings is the area where additional items can be added to, to the newly created record. This is done instantly by selecting Batch View. Select an item that will be copied and clicking the Batch Create button. When batch adding, the system will only allow up to 100 items to be created at a time. Blue Cloud offers a quick and convenient way to add multiple devices with ease. Mobile Staff is the third version of library software. Mobile Staff is used to check out and check in materials and devices. It is also a web-based application. To check out materials or devices, scan the student or staff member's user ID, scan the item barcode of the material or device and the item is checked out. In mobile staff, checking in materials and devices only requires scanning a device or materials item barcode and the item is checked in. Mobile staff also has an app available that allows materials and devices to be checked in and checked out through an Android or iPhone. The steps to check out an item through a mobile device is very similar to utilizing the desktop version of mobile staff. First, scan the user ID of the student or staff member. Next, the camera on the device will open up. Scan the item barcode of the material or device and the item is checked out. When entering the user ID manually, click user search. The user search will allow searches by name, district ID number, as well as other fields. Once the correct student or staff member's account is found, scan the material or device's item barcode and the item is checked out. 
Mobile Staff Kiosk offers a touch-free self-checkout option. Setting up the kiosk only requires a designated computer and a login for the kiosk user, which is already set up in the system. Now let's discuss reporting. Workflows offers multiple reporting capabilities, allowing access to analyze data in a variety of formats. All reports can be saved as a template to run on demand or scheduled. The report settings and workflows offer a variety of options to streamline reports to only present the information that is important to you. Although workflows has an array of reports, we will discuss five reports, the active loan report, the shelf list report, the barcode labels report, the overdue notice report, and the overdue report. These reports will provide information to assist with keeping track of and maintaining your inventory. The active loan report offers important information on items currently checked out. This report lists the names of students or staff members, the title of the item, the item ID, call number, due date, and the price, as well as some other helpful fields such as the teacher, grade, and building. This report output includes Word or Excel format. The shelf list report provides an overview of all inventory in any specific building or many buildings. This report offers a great way to keep track of inventory such as laptops or other technical devices by providing a spreadsheet format option, which allows you to organize data quickly. This report has an option to add user information such as the student's ID and username to a report for easy access of who has a particular device checked out. In the Word format, the shelf list report provides a short summary that displays all total devices or materials, the total number of checkouts since the creation of the material or device in the system, and the status such as checked in or checked out. There are two barcode label reports. The item labels print barcode labels for devices and materials and the patron label report prints barcode labels for students and staff members. Both reports print the name or title along with the building with a scannable barcode, making it easy to complete processes in all three versions of the library software. The overdue notice report provides the option to create customized reminders to send out to students and staff members about materials and devices that are coming due or that are past due. This report can be ran by building or district. The screenshot on the left side displays the report settings in which a customized message can be added as well as a subject line detail. The screenshot on the right side displays the actual notice that can be either printed or emailed to students and staff members. The overdue report provides a listing of all individuals who are overdue on returning devices or materials. The screenshot displays a report in both Word and Excel format. The overdue report provides options for any specific date or date range, as well as any specific building or district. Charge history displays the checkout history of a material or device. This tool is a great way to find out whom the material or device was checked out to last. Charge history displays information such as student or staff member's user ID, the date the item was checked out, and the date the item was checked in. Tracy, I'm going to turn it over to you to talk a little bit about inventory. Thanks, Camille. Now that you understand how to circulate your assets using the InfoHio LSP, I'll show you how to keep track of everything from year to year. To begin an inventory, all you really need is a computer and a scanner. Place your computer atop a mobile cart so you can easily move around the building. As you scan each item, you can also consider whether it requires service or needs to be disposed. 
the additional supplies listed make it easy to collect and label assets that require further attention. Completing a physical inventory will help you identify what you have on hand and ensure it matches what's in your system. Luckily, workflows and mobile staff have tools you can use to tackle this job. With the InfoHio LSP, you can scan your assets, then run reports that identify date purchased, date inventory, status, and funding source, all vital information that will help you reconcile your database. Conducting a hands-on inventory gives you a chance to observe the condition of your assets so their status can be updated in the system. Another benefit is that you have an opportunity to restore items to their home locations in preparation for the next school year. When your inventory is complete, the reports generated can identify items that are missing, damaged, or need to be replaced. Since reports include the asset's purchase date, you can also use this data to manage your replacement cycle. Thanks, Tracy. Since the software and server are managed for you, there's no maintenance that the district needs to perform. There is a tool where you can scan devices and mark them for removal. Once a batch has been scanned, a report of the devices can be run and then your support team can bulk remove the materials. If a device is damaged, there's an account in the system called repair. You can check out devices to this account and run a report of all items that are in the repair shop. With charge history turned on, you can look at a device and see when and how many times it has been sent to repair. As mentioned, Blue Cloud Cataloging allows you to bulk add up to 100 devices or copies at a time. If you're not tracking item specific information like serial numbers, you can use this method to quickly and easily add hundreds of new devices or materials to the system. You are also welcome to submit additional spreadsheets of items that need to be added whenever is needed. Now that we've shared how this works, we want to take a few moments and share with you a demonstration on how easy this really is. This is the workflows version of the software. Under common tasks, I'm going to click on the checkout items. I'm going to then search for my student by name. When I do, it'll bring up all the students with that name. I'm going to select my student, Tyler, either double click on his name or click on checkout to user. I'm then going to scan the barcode of the device and it will assign the device to the student. I'm going to click on checkout to new user. This time I'm going to search for the student by their district student ID number. By setting the index to alt ID, I can then search for the student by their district student ID number. This index default can be set in advance. Because there's only one student with that district student ID number, Michael Baxter's account appears. I can then check out the device to Michael. I can click on checkout to new user. This time I'm going to set the index to homeroom and I'm going to search for the students in homeroom 132. Once I do my search, I can locate my student. I'm going to retrieve Cheyenne's account and check out a device to Cheyenne. Here you can see the device title, the item ID, and the date that the item is due. When the students return the items, I would click on check in items and scan the barcode numbers of the devices and return them back to available status. If we click on item search display, we can then search for a device. And when we do, we will notice that there is a tab here labeled charge history. By clicking on charge history, I can see who has had this device and when. So this is looking at the history of, uh, of the device. I can also look at the history of a user. If I click on user maintenance, click on display user. I can then retrieve a student's account. Select Tyler. And here he also has a tab labeled charge history. And here is a list of devices that he has had checked out and when. 
let's jump on over to the Blue Cloud version and see how it works. Here we are in the Blue Cloud version of the software. It is in a Chrome browser. I'm going to click on the circulation button. That will take me to my screen for I can search for my user. I'm going to enter the last name of the student. I'm going to then browse and locate Tyler's account. If I click on his account, it'll bring it up. I can then check out the device to Tyler. When I do, again, you'll see that it displays the title and the item ID and a due date. I'm going to return to the user search screen. I'm going to change the search index to alt ID. I'm going to enter the student's district student ID number. And again, because there's only one student with that account number, it'll bring up Michael Baxter's account. I can then check out the item to Michael. If I return to the user search screen, change the search index to homeroom, I'm going to look for the students in homeroom 132, but only within my building. When I do, I can locate Cheyenne's account and check out the device to Cheyenne. From the Blue Cloud Circulation main screen, I can click on the link for check-in. And for devices that have been returned, I can check them in and make them available for other users to borrow. That is the Blue Cloud version of the software. Now let's jump on over to the mobile staff and see how it works. Okay, here we are in the mobile staff version of the software, also in the Chrome web browser. I click on the checkout and with the user IDs field, I can search for the student by their district student ID number. This brings up Michael Baxter's account. I can then scan the barcode of the device and it checks it out to him. I'm then going to click on switch user. That'll take me to my next search screen. Because I'm going to do a search by name, I'm going to click on user search. And in the index for name, search for Townsend, browse and locate Tyler's account. And once I have Tyler's account on the screen, I can check out the device to him. We're going to click on switch user, click on user search, and here we're going to change the index to home room. Search for our students in home room 132. Locate Cheyenne's account. And then I'll go ahead and check out that Chromebook to Cheyenne. When items are returned, I would click on the check in button and scan the devices and return them back to a status of available. Now let's discuss how easy it is to add materials and devices to the Blue Cloud Library system. To begin, select Cataloging. Once in the Cataloging screen, select New Record. The new record will appear. The first step is to select the template. I'm going to select the Info Ohio General Equipment Template. To begin, I'm going to select my date catalog. So I'm going to select the gadget to select the date. I'm going to fill in all required fields. The first field here is format. It's already defaulted, so I'm not going to change anything there. And remember, all fields that are required will have the red asterisk next to the field name. So my next field that is required will be my class schema. So I'm going to select the at Dewey location. My call number will always be the word auto. And I'm going to select the call library, which is the library in which I reside in. And click the create button. My new record has been created. I have a generic call number assigned. And in this area, I can also begin to edit my bibliographic record to um, have anything that I need to have 
for the particular item that I am adding. In this example, the first thing I'm going to do is add um, my equipment type. So I'm going to change this here to Chromebook. I'm going to add a model number. And I'm going to change the brand. When finished editing all of your tags, you can go ahead and click the Save button. Once you've saved all your information, you can move on to Manage Holdings. In Manage holding, Holdings, the first thing you will need to do is update your call number. And click the Save button. Now that you have updated your call number, the next step is to add your first item. In order to do that, you'll just click new item. Once you add your new item, you'll need to edit the item information and fill in all, and fill in all of the required fields. The first field that is required here is the item barcode, so I will add the, the word auto. From there, I will select my item type. For my library, the item type will be one-to-one -one device. The home location, I will make everything available that I'm adding right now. And for my item category one or item group, I will select equipment. And I also would like to add the price for my new devices. And click the create button. Now I have added my first item underneath my record. However, I would like to add 100 items. So in order to do that, I need to add 99 more items to the one item that I've already created. To do that, I will just switch from my regular mode here to the batch create mode. Within batch create mode, the first thing I will need to do is just select the item that I want to copy. And from there, go to the bottom of the screen here and select the batch create button. In the batch item creation screen, I'm going to tell the system I need 99 more of these items created. And I'm going to click create. The system will begin to create all of the 99 items that I have just requested. Once the items have been created, I have an option to undo everything that I just did. So I, I can just delete the 99 items or I can just close out of this window and those 99 items will be created. Now I have a total of 100 volumes, which are 100 items underneath my record that I previously created. I'll just click the save button. I can also switch back to my regular mode where I can see my original record that was created with my call number and all of the items that I have previously created. This concludes my demo on adding items within the Blue Cloud Library Services. So, are you curious? Do you wanna get started? Contact your ITC support provider if you're unsure who your ITC support provider is, feel free to contact us here at the Info Ohio support team and we can get you connected. Looking for more? Check out Info Ohio's OETC 21 on-demand presentations. Follow us on social media, tag a teacher, Share the name of your favorite resource or use hashtags to promote awareness.